What's good? What's going on, man? It's your boy B, and we back in this mud with another video, man. Today we got Larry Bird versus Kevin Durant. Who's better? Video title: Why Larry Bird will always be better than Kevin Durant. We gonna see in this video, man. Y'all comment y'all thoughts and pings below. I'm always down there, man. Uh, be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoy the reaction, man. With that being said, let's hop straight into it. Me personally, though. If I had to choose between one or the other, I got I got to go with Larry Bird. You know what I'm saying? We know Kevin Durant got like you know what I'm saying a height advantage over, maybe a little bit more athletic, but uh, yeah, Larry Bird just he he the goat man. It's it's a, it's, it's more more reasons than that, but uh, Larry Bird the goat. That's like, we gonna leave it at that, man. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I am back in the video. Yeah, big shout out to Uncut Hoops, man. Uncut Hoops for putting this video together, man. This time, once again, we're going to compare two NBA legends, one from the past and one in the current NBA. And the players I've chosen are Larry Bird and Kevin Durant. And first off, I want to clarify, both these guys in my personal book are top 15 players of all time and both top three small forwards. And I think in the coming years, Kevin Durant is going to have some big time debates and arguments for actually being better than Larry Legend. So with that being the case, I wanted to make my case as to why Bird will always be better and greater than one Kevin Durant. Now before we get into that, get the if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to do so. And numbers if you don't like lie. this video, I greatly appreciate it. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So first off, when looking at both Larry Bird and Kevin Durant, they're both talented offensive players and all-time great small forwards. I'd establish and everyone knows that. But when I look at both these players, there are some really big differences on their impact on winning in a team overall. Specifically looking at Larry Bird, when he came in the NBA as a rookie in 1980, he completely transformed a Celtics team that was in the dumpster of the NBA. And looking at both these rosters with Bird and without Bird the previous year, they're fairly similar and definitely comparable. Mm. On both these teams, he had one 20-point score and eight guys in double digits. And when you go... Who's Bob McAdoo? Mick Mickadoo. Mickadoo. That last name is like that threw me off. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Um, yeah, who's him? We need to check him out. Averaging 20 points. Cedric too. You know what I'm saying? We, got, we need we need to check. Yeah. Go more in depth on both these teams, before Bird and with Bird, the 80 Celtics drastically improved with their only big improvement being Larry Bird. Look at the 80 Celtics, fifth in scoring, sixth in opponent scoring, first in SRS, first in net rating, second offensive rating, fourth in defensive rating, and they won 61 games, the most in the NBA. Only a year before that Boston. What does SRS stands for, man? I ain't gonna lie, I'm clueless, I have no idea. And the, the net, let me know what these two right here mean. What do, what do you mean by these right here? was in the bottom half of every category in the NBA. And to clarify at this time, there are only 22 teams in the league. So in all these categories, they're on the bottom quarter of offense as well as defense. And in total, they only won 29 games and the 20th best record out of 22 teams. And looking past Bird's early years, look at 1988, Bird's last prime season. That year, Boston was third in scoring, 14th in opponent scoring, first in SRS, first in net rating, First in offensive rating, 17th in defensive rating, and they won 57 games, the second best record in the NBA. Only a year later, the 89 Celtics, with Bird playing six games, dropped in virtually every category. And they went from a top tier offensive team and Wait, what? Scoring, 14th in opponent scoring, first in SRS, first in net rating, first in offensive rating, 17th in defensive rating, and they won 57 games, the second best record in the NBA. Only a year later, the 89 Celtics, with Bird playing six games, dropped in virtually every category. And they went from a top tier offensive team and a top tier defensive team to a mid tier or below average team in those categories. And in total, they only won 42 games for the 16th best record in the NBA. How does Popeye's chicken yeah. sandwich? I mean, Bird definitely carried the Celtics, you know what I'm saying? He also had um, Kevin McHale, um, Dennis. Uh, that point guard, I forgot his name, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and they was like the duo. We all know they was the duo. I thought it was Kevin Mc, um, Kevin McHale, but it, it won't. It was, it was the Dennis guy, Dennis Johnson. That's his and name. in total, they only won 42 games, the 16th best record in the NBA. So anyway, you want to slice it when looking at Larry Bird, whether he was old or young, when he was not on the court, his impact was definitely felt for that Boston team, as he was their best scorer, their best passer, as well as their best rebounder, and some years early on, he was actually their best defender, making three all-defensive teams. Hey, him saying that made me realize like that's another reason probably why he felt like every time he got injured, he he needed to play regardless because he don't want to see his team get bashed by his opponents. You know what I'm saying? Come back out the locker room. Hurt neck, broke nose. For KD, yes, he is impactful, but you can make a very strong argument for his two championships. He was not the most KD valuable player too. on those teams. That was Steph Curry. Now, looking past Bird's immense impact, let's look at how good his peak was from 84 to 88. Looking at his stats, he averaged 27 points per game, 9.8 boards, 6.8 assists, on insane 51 40 and 89.9 splits. During a five year period, Larry Bird was a 27 point 54 90 player. That historically is insane and only rivaled by someone like a Steph Curry. Also during this time period, Three Bird MVPs. won three MVPs all in a row, and his Boston team won 60 plus games, also three years in a row. And if you look More to his final. playoff numbers, once again, they're nearly identical to his stats in the season, as he averaged 26 points per game, 10 boards, 7 assists, on 4 9 37 and 90 splits. And during this time period, Boston won two championships, with Bird winning two Faust MVPs. And whatever you think Larry Bird's best season was, you have to admit he was the best offensive player in the NBA, and arguably the best all-around player of the game in scene. Yeah, sure. He was a top three scorer, the best small forward rebounder, and the second best passer only behind Magic. And one thing you have to know about Larry Bird in his prime, he averaged 39.1 minutes per game, and he missed less than 20 games during a five-year stretch. That for today's players is simply unheard of. Now, when looking at Bird's best season, and like a lot of y'all said, man, um, like I said, I be reading the comments, man. Um, a lot of y'all agree that if Bird was like, if if he stayed healthy or whatnot, or he didn't have the injuries, his numbers would be looking real crazy. You know what I'm saying? Compared to how they looking now, like so. I 100% agree with that. I'm not even going to lie to you. In totality, taking into account accolades, I think it's the 86 season where he won MVP. During this year, Larry averaged 25.8 points per game, 9.8 boards, 6.8 assists, on 49-42 and 89 splits. I maybe the 1988 season. And Boston's a team with the best record in the NBA, only losing 15 games. And Bird this year made 82 threes. That was the most in the NBA, and had 10 triple doubles, Damn, also the most in the league. Please. And we're looking at stats versus the team. He was their leader in points, assists, rebounds, as well as steals. And for the NBA, he was 4th in scoring, 7th in boards, 9th in steals, and 14th in assists. Also, the advanced stats are phenomenal, as he ranks top 10 in offense, as well as defense in the advanced stat categories. And if you look to the playoffs, once again, his stats are highly impressive, as he averaged 25.9 points per game, 9.3 boards, 8.2 assists, on 52, 41, and 93 splits. And for the 86 Celtics in the playoffs, they had a 15-3 record, only losing one game in the Eastern Conference. Tragic. And the one thing I found very interesting is that Bird, in the closeout games, was something phenomenal. Averaging 24.5 points, 8.8 .8 boards, 7.5 assists, on remarkable 52, 54, and 94 splits. And in Game 6 versus Houston in the Finals, he had 29 points, 12 assists, and 11 boards, and a closeout victory. And speaking of the NBA yeah, of Finals, I... Larry Bird, in my personal view, yeah, played tougher Finals competition than Kevin Durant. Look at Larry Bird's five Finals appearances. In 81, he played the Rockets, 84 to Lakers, 85 to Lakers, 86 to Rockets, and 87 to Lakers once again. On those teams, these are some of the greatest players of the decade. He had most Malone, Malone. Kyle Murphy, Hakeem, Ralph Sampson. yeah, we checked out. I don't, I'm not sure we checked out Moses Malone. We did definitely checked out Hakeem. Elijah Warren, we checked out him. Uh, um, Kareem, Abdul Jabbar, Magic, 
Tim, Kareem, Magic, Worthy, Michael Cooper, and older Bob McAdoo. And specifically looking at the Lakers, those three teams are better than any final team KD ever played. And Bird beating the 84 Lakers was a massive upset at the time. And one thing for KD's legacy that also be mentioned is that he went to a 73 win team after blowing a 3 1 lead to them in the Western Conference Final. How do y'all feel about uh, KD when he joined the, like, the, uh, the Warriors, man? That, that was big. I'm not even going to lie to you. I know a lot of people looked at him like, bro, you, you joined a super team. Like, and if I'm not mistaken, didn't they just come off winning a uh, championship that year? If I'm not mistaken. So he left the Thunder, left Westbrook and them, and decided to join the Warriors. How did y'all feel when he did that, man? I'm just curious, bro. Larry Bird for his entire career found one franchise and was loyal to Boston. Kevin Durant made the weakest move in NBA history by going to Golden State. It's a fact and it simply just happened. And when looking at his resume, you have to evaluate that. Now also when looking at Bird's overall game, one thing he thrived at was being clutch. As clutch in his time children. period, he was the most clutch player in the NBA and hit numerous game winning shots. And in total, he had four career buzzer beating shots all those coming to Boston trailing in the game. In those four games, he averaged 41.3 points per game. He scored 38 versus Phoenix, 48 versus Portland, 32 versus Detroit, and 47 Seven versus Washington. Washington. No other player in NBA history has multiple 45-point buzzer-beating games. Mm. And also, Bird is the only player ever that had back-to-back -back buzzer beaters in consecutive games. That's and dope. in his career, he had 21 career game time go ahead shots in the final 24 seconds. Also looking at Game 7's Bird, averaged 27 points per game, 9.3 boards, and 6.8 assists. In closeout finals games, he averaged 24 points per game, 11.2 boards, and 5.7 assists. So Bird in the big time games in the finals and the playoffs, in Game 7's, he always came through for his team and was clutch in the final moments. I think that for a basketball player is a pretty big thing for the you. overall game. Now, after looking at all Who's that data, all those Larry? facts, my closing argument has to do with the fact Bird is just the better overall basketball player. When it comes to scoring, KD is the better player. When it comes to passing, Bird has a huge edge on KD. Basketball IQ is in Bird's favor. Shooting the basketball also in Bird's favor. Clutch definitely in Bird's favor. Basketball mentality 100% in Bird's favor. One-on-one -on -one game, that's in KD's favor. Okay, so, okay, now he getting to the nitty-gritty. He just showed us the stats. All right, so what he's saying, he's saying KD is a better scorer than Larry. I need to see KD numbers to, to, to you know what I'm saying? I need to see KD numbers to to agree with him on that. But um, passing, I, I give it to Larry Bird. Um, athleticism, I give it to KD. Um, what else? Shooting? Man, I gotta go. I gotta go with Larry, man. I gotta go with Larry, man. I know KD got to jump on him too. Um, what else? Defense. That's gonna be a tough one. That's gonna be a tough. One. I ain't really seen too much defense from KD. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I feel like I, I look at KD as more so of an offensive player than like a, you know what I'm saying, like a defensive player. So. But when you look at the general criteria for a basketball player, Larry Bird checks more of those boxes than Kevin Durant. Also on the defensive end, Bird was a three-time defensive player, and his peak was better than Kevin Durant. And I think adding in the intangibles, yeah. that puts Bird even more over the top when compared to KD. And lastly, I'll do a resume summary of Bird's career. In total, he had 10 seasons of 25-5, the second most ever, 5 seasons of 20-10-5, the most ever, he has two seasons averaging 20 points per game on 50-40-90 splits, the most ever, and he has the second highest scoring average for a 50-40-90 season. Also, he's the last player in the NBA to win three straight MVP awards. In total, Bird Dang. led the NBA in free throw percentage four different times, and in a seven-year period, he only missed 10 games. And from 81 to 88, he was top 10 in scoring, as was well rebounding. And probably the most impressive stat, we're looking at a fine Larry Bird, from 80 to 88, in he was top three in MVP voting every single year. That right there is a big piece of my argument 
of why Larry Bird is a better overall player and has a greater legacy when compared to Kevin Durant. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. For sure, man. Um, I wish you would have showed like uh, the KD stats as well, so we can get do like get like a side by side comparison. That I feel like that would have been dope as well. But anyways, man, big shout out to my man's uh, Uncut Hoops, man, putting the Larry Bird content together for us to watch. I'll uh, comment y'all thoughts and opinions below, man. I'm always down in the comments, man. Be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed the reaction. Appreciate y'all watching it with me. Until next time, catch y'all on this video. Check out one of the videos on the screen as well. It's definitely a banger. I wouldn't miss it if I was you. <laughs>